Andi Hayaribo, Jayom Vishnu Pad, Pada Mahongsa, Pada Project, Acharya, Asatara, Sutta Sri Sriman, Iskan Bibiti Founder, Charles of Angrish, AC Bakhtudanta Swami Maharaj Prabhupada Kijai, Nitya Prabhishna Om Vishnu Pad is of Angrish, Shila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur Prabhupada Kijai, Ananta Koti Vaishavar Nakijai, Kijai, Nam Acharya, Shila Haridas Thakur Kijai, Prem Sakahosh Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Dhan and Sri Advaita, Gadad Hara, Shiva Sadi Gorbak Dhan Kijai, Shri Shri Radha Krishna Gopa Gopa Na Shama Kunda Radha Kunda Giru Govardhan Ki Jai Shri Braja Mumu Nama Nam Ki Jai Shri Nabadut Mayapur Nam Ki Jai Shri Nila Chal Jagannath Puri Nam Ki Jai Ganga Mahi Ki Jai Jamuna Mahi Ki Jai Bhakti Devi Ki Jai Shri Mati Tulsi Maharani Ki Jai The most beautiful Lordship Shri Shukmini Dorkadish Ki Jai Shri Shukmini Dorkanath Ki Jai Samabe to Bhakti Vrinda Ki Jai Going back to home, back to home, back to Godhead Ki Jai she is in Los Angeles, Yachar Kijai. Brihamadanga Transcendental Book Distribution Kijai. International Food for Life Transcendental Prasadam Distribution Kijai. All glorious to the Seven Devotees. All glorious to the Seven Devotees. All glorious to the Seven Devotees. All glorious, all glorious to Sri Sri Guru and Goranga. Glory to the Prophet. So, those of us who are proper disciples, we're getting on in years. So, if any one of us freezes up on the Vyasa Sun, don't just sit there and think we're in ecstasy. Take us to the hospital. And that happened actually in, in Tucson with our God brother Urgis He was giving class and he had a stroke. He just was just sitting there and the devotees were thinking that he's in ecstasy, <laughs> but he had a stroke. So, I'm just putting you all on notice. We're all getting old. So, if we freeze up on the Vyasa Sun, don't hesitate. Come and grab the body and take it to the hospital or the morgue. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya So, we're continuing our reading from the third canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam. This is chapter 9, and today's text is 22. So, young Samasta Jagatam Surid Eka Atma Satvena Yan Mridayate Bhagavan Bhagena Tainaiva me trisham anusprishatad yataham sakshami purvavad idam pranata priyosau so young samasa jagatam surileka atma. Satve nayan mridayate bhagavan bhagena Satve nayan mridayate bhagavan bhagena Te naiva me drishavanus Srakshyami purva varidang pranato priyosau So young Samasta Jagatang Surid Eka Atma. Satwe Nayan Muridayate Bhagavan Bhagena. Te Naiva Medrishamanus Prishatat Yataham. Sakshyami purva varidang pranata priyasau. So young samasta jagatang surid eka atma. So 
Tena yan mridayate Bhagavan Pagena. Tena eva made the shamanus prishatad yataham. Srakshami purva vadidang pranata prioso. Please chant. Vaishnavins. Samasta Jagatang Suideka Atma Satwain and Yan Mridhayate Bhagavan Pakena Okay, synonyms. Saha, he. I am the Lord. Samasta Jagatam of all the universes. Suhrit Ekaha, the one friend and philosopher. Atma, the super soul. Satvena, by the mode of goodness. Yet, 
One who? Muridayate causes happiness. Bhagavan, the personality of Godhead. Bhagena, with six opulences. Tena, by him. Eva, certainly. Me, to me. Drisham, power of introspection. Anusprishatat, let him give. Yata, as. Aham, I. Shakshyami, will be able to create. Purvavat, as before. Idam, this universe. Pranata, surrendered. Priyaha, dear. Also, he, the Lord. So, Srila Prabhupada's translation for this verse. Let the Supreme Lord be merciful towards me. He is the one friend and soul of all living entities in the world, and he maintains all for their ultimate happiness by his six transcendental opulences. May he be merciful towards me so that I, as before, may be empowered with the introspection to create. For I am also one of the surrendered souls who are dear to the Lord. Srila Prabhupada's purport. The Supreme Lord, Purushottama, or Sri Krishna, is a maintainer of all in both the transcendental and material worlds. He is the life and friend of all because there is eternally natural affection and love between the living entities and the Lord. He is the one friend and well-wisher for all, and he is one without a second. The Lord maintains all the living entities everywhere by his six transcendental opulences, for which he is known as Bhagavan, or the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Lord Brahma prayed for his mercy so that he might be able to create the universal affairs as he did before. Only by the Lord's causeless mercy could he create both material and spiritual personalities like Marichi and Narada, respectively. Brahma prayed to the Lord because he is very much dear to the surrendered soul. The surrendered soul knows nothing but the Lord, and therefore the Lord is very affectionate towards him. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai Nama Om Vishnu Padaya, Krishna Prashtaya, Bhutale, Srimate Bhaktivedanta Swami Nitinamine. Namaste Saraswate Deve Gauravani Pacharine, Nirishesha Shunivari, Paschacha Deshitarine. Om Agyana Timirandasya, Gyananjana Shalakaya, Chakshur Unmilitam Jaina, Tasmai Sri Gurave Namaha. Shri Chaitanya Mano Vishnang, Shapitang Jaina Bhutale, Swayam Rupa Kadamayam, Dadati Sopadanti Kam. Vandeya Hang Sri Guru Sri Yutapada Kamalam Sri Guru and Vaishavangsha Sri Rupam Sagajatam Sahagana Raganatan Batam Tang Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Sri Radha Krishna Pada and Sahagana Lalita Sri Vishakan Batangsha He Krishna Karana Sindhu Dina Bando Jagat Pate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namosate Tapta Kanchana Gorangi Radhe Vrindabhaneshwari Vishamanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vancha Kalpaturubhya Shakripa Sindhubhya Evacha Patitanang Pavanebhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Dittananda Shri Advaita Gadadhara Shiva Siddhi Gorbakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare so obviously Lord Brahma is not telling Lord Vishnu anything that the Lord doesn't know. So why is he saying all these things? And we find the same in almost all prayers that are offered to the Lord. That the offerer of the prayer starts out by glorifying the Lord, telling him things about himself that he knows, obviously. He knows everything. <laughs> so why is that? For our edification. So that we can gradually understand that although the living entity is referred to as Purusha, we are not Purushottama. When you contract those two words, like in English, we have so many words that we contract. Do and not becomes don't. 
So similarly in Sanskrit, they contract words. Purusha and Uttama becomes Purushottama. So we are sometimes referred to as Purusha, which technically means the enjoyer. But we are not Purusha Uttama. And every time we try to enjoy in this world, we are reminded that the very thing that you try to enjoy can turn out to be detrimental to you. Not only not enjoyable, but actually detrimental. The example we like to use in early days is ice cream. You scream ice cream, we all scream for ice cream. Everybody loves ice cream, except for all the vegans nowadays. But anyway, back in those days, everybody related to ice cream. So we would say to somebody, would you like a scoop? Of course. Second scoop, why not? Third scoop, but then you get to four and five, and you can't. The very same thing you were enjoying a few minutes ago, if you keep eating it, it will make you sick. That's the nature of material so-called happiness and enjoyment. It's temporary, it doesn't last, and it can become detrimental to your existence. So we have to admit, we are not actually Purushas. We're trying to enjoy, but there is always some impediment to our enjoyment. And that applies to everybody in this material world. Just like yesterday's class, we were hearing Prabhupada is talking, speaking on Kunti's prayers, and she was praying about how Krishna saved herself and the Pandavas from so many calamities. So Prabhupada pointed out, that yes, even the pure devotees have to face calamities. That's the nature of this material world. The difference is because they are surrendered to Purushottama, they're saved always. They're taken care of by Krishna. Why? Because as it's pointed out in today's verse, he's the best friend of everybody. He also says that himself in the Bhagavad Gita, where Bhagavad Gita uh, Advent is coming up early next month. This year it falls early, the first weekend. So on the actual day, which is Saturday, I think it's the third, right? We're going to be having our normal Gita Yogya. So everybody should plan on attending us. At least that one day we can hear the entire Bhagavad Gita in one sitting. Uh, maybe some of you do that anyway during the year, but at least on that one day we all get together and recite the entire Bhagavad Gita. So at the end of the fifth chapter, even our new bhaktas should know this, Krishna just clears how one can find peace and happiness in this world. Again, we're looking for happiness through ice cream or this or whatever. But if you want to be happy, you have to know these things. Krishna says, Bhoktaram Yagya Tapasam. That's the first thing. You have to know that I, Krishna, I'm the real enjoyer. So how do we enjoy? By giving enjoyment to Krishna, or at least trying to, under guidance, not just dreaming up something and thinking that this is going to be enjoyable to Krishna. Under guidance of Guru, that's why Guru is required. Yes, you want to please God, but you have to be told how to please God. Not just anything you dream up, you can offer to God and think it's going to be accepted. So Krishna says, you have to know that I'm the Bhokta. I am the enjoyer of everything. All your sacrifices, all your work, everything you do is meant for my, or should be offered to me for my enjoyment. It's kind of counterintuitive when you're in material consciousness. We think... That in order to enjoy, I have to find something for me. I have to find someone for me. I have to find some situation that I will be happy in. But no, you have to please Krishna. And even on the material platform, we gradually realize that. If I want to be happy, I have to interact nicely with others. I can't be happy by myself. As we, the, at least when I was growing up, there was a saying, no man is an island, no man stands alone. Of course, that includes women also. <clears throat> you can't do it on your own. You can't be happy by yourself. You have to interact. And in order to interact with others nicely, you have to be in a giving mood. All right? Nobody likes anybody who just wants to take, 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 take. You have to give. Give and receive. People give you gifts, you give them gifts. They give you, you know, their time, you give them your time. You know, Prophet was very, very... Who could be busier than Prophet? We see what he did in 12 years. He was always busy, always something to do. But still, he gave his time to his neophyte disciples, to any guests that would come. But nowadays, people can't give their time. You see them, even they're walking their dogs. And they so-called love the dog. But there's no interaction. They're always on their phone. I notice every one of them, they're walking the dog. The rope is strung around their arm and they're texting or something. <laughs> can't even give the dog a moment's attention. <laughs> so we're like that. With each other also, we can't 
literally, people have conversations, supposedly, but at the same time, they're texting somebody else. We can't give our time, really. But Prophet did. He gave his time and attention. I was just recalling to some devotee uh, yesterday how Prophet, when he was in Laguna Beach, there had been an incident where a bus driver, Carmi, somebody who didn't know anything about Christian consciousness, he was driving a bus, stopped at a stop, and people got down, and somebody was in front of the bus he didn't notice, and he ran over the person. The person died. So he was distraught. He was upset, and it was, you know, he couldn't, even though, you know, he wasn't charged with any crime or anything. But finally, he met a devotee, and through the devotee, he was introduced to Prabhupada. And at that meeting with Prabhupada, he told Prabhupada the story about what happened with the bus. And Prabhupada thought about it, you know, gave this man his time. Somebody, not really a big person or anybody important, but he gave the man his time. He listened to the story. And after listening, Prophet said, it's not your fault. And the guy felt such relief. When a pure devotee agrees with you and tells you it's not your fault. Like a burden was lifted off his shoulders. So, time. So, Krishna says, Bhoktaram, Yoga Tapasam, Sarva Loka Maheshwaram. I own everything. If everybody just would let that sink in, the, you know, fever of material acquisition would just gradually die out. But no, we're thinking, so much do I have today, and it will increase in the future more and more. This is the demonic mentality from the 16th chapter. So much is mine. You see, everything is mine. He is my enemy, and I have killed him, and all my other enemies will also be killed. Ishwara Aham, Aham Bogi, Siddha Aham, Balavan Sukhi. Ishwara, I am the controller. Aham means I. Ishwara Aham, Aham Bogi, I am the enjoyer. Although Krishna says, no, you're not the enjoyer. Give me enjoyment. Siddha Aham, I am perfect. Don't you dare criticize me in any way. Don't even think about it. Because Siddha Aham, I'm perfect. Balavan, I'm very powerful. And because of all that, Sukhi, I'm happy. But that's foolish because just even a child with a little bit of thoughtful attitude can see that nobody's happy in this world. Everybody's struggling. Everybody's struggling. From the wealthiest to the poorest, from the strongest to the weakest, everybody struggles in this world. But if you try to get out of this world, they will tell you, no, no, I'm very happy. Prophet mentioned that on many occasions. He says the parents, especially the father, has gone through life, has had so much misery in life, and family in life, and business, and everywhere. But if the son says, you know what, Dad? I'm going to become a Hare Krishna. No, 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 no. <laughs> you have to follow my footsteps. Get married, take over the business, etc. They want you to be miserable like they are. They don't have any other option. That's why. They don't see any other option. Yes, yes, I had my rough spots. But if you do the same thing, get married, have children, have a business, you'll be happy. No, I can see. That's not the case. In my case, that's how it was. I could see. My parents, God bless them, they never divorced, but they fought like anything. They got married real young and they didn't really like each other after some time. But because in the culture in those days, you stay married no matter what. After all, you made that promise through happiness or distress and sickness and in health. So they stuck it out. They had three kids. But I could see from an early age, they were not happy. And father had a business and, you know, he would struggle with that. And the mother would say, stop, go get a job. You're not making any money in your business. She would force him to go get a job at a bank or something. So I could see there was no happiness in this family life. But of course, when I became a Hare Krishna, they were not happy. They came, Brigapati was there, came to Henry Street where I joined and tried to convince me to give it up. And the funny thing is I had joined right after my third year of college and had one more year to go, but I didn't want to go back. And then lo and behold, one day, the temple president, Gopi Janavalava, he came to me and said, you know, Back to Orville, I wasn't initiated yet. He said, I think you should go back and finish. You know, you're studying engineering. Prophet is going to build so many temples. You could, you know, he could use your skills. And he convinced me to go back to school. Later on, I found out why he really convinced me. My elder sister uh, came to the temple one day with two of her male friends <clears throat> who were both football players. Football players. American football. So they were huge, you know. Huge black body, six five, six six, big afros. So the top of president was scared. <laughs> he thought if I don't convince him to go back to school, these guys may be going to attack. They may be Black Panthers. Who knows what? So that's why he convinced me to go back to school. But anyway, 
So Krishna says, I am the enjoyer and I am the proprietor of everything. And then it related to today's, to today's verse and purport, Suridam, Krishna says, Sarbadi. We all try to be friends to each other, but something always, you know, some pinprick, something happens and, you know, after a while the friendship sours or whatever. But Krishna is not like that. Krishna is our friend eternally. Now, why would he be? No, the question should be, why would he not be? Because we are his parts and parcels. We belong to him. And he will always be there for us. You and I, I may be there for you sometimes, maybe not other times, but Krishna is not like that. And therefore, Prabhupada explains, that's why he uses this word surit. Surit means the dearest to your heart. You cannot separate from your heart that person. So Krishna is like that for us. He's the surit, the dear most sweetest friend that we can ever have. But not only when we're in human form, we see Prabhupada pointed again to this picture while he was here. He said, Krishna is not only embracing Radharani and gopis, he embraces the cows, the trees. He loves everybody, no matter what form they're in. And similarly, when we come to the material world, we take on, as you know, 8,400,000 different forms. Krishna is there for us in all of those forms. It's not only when you're a demigod like Brahma, okay, I'll give you audience, I'll, you know, no. Krishna is there for everyone in the ant form, in the tree form, in the human form, in the cat form, in the rat form. Whatever form you're in, Krishna is there with you and he's there for you. So we should take that to heart. We should take that to heart. Krishna declares that, Lord Brahma is declaring it here, that you're not only being nice to me, you're nice to everybody. And I'm, please give me your mercy because I'm also one of the surrendered souls. And they're, they're, that's, these two things are key. We should always want the mercy of the Supreme Lord. We try to get favor of each other, of some big person, or like recently we had a visit from the matriarch of the Ambani family. Most of you may have heard of the Ambani family, one of the wealthiest families in India, maybe in the whole world. Um, I told a story once about the two brothers, how envy works. You know, when the father died, both brothers inherited the big business, Big, one of the biggest businesses in, in India. But the younger brother could not surrender to working under his elder brother. So they split the business in two. And lo and behold, the younger brother, he frittered his money away. So he went from hero to zero. He had billions of dollars and frittered it away. Bollywood investments and this and that and psh, to nothing. So this is how envy works in this world. First of all, you should understand that everything belongs to Krishna. Whatever he gives you should be used in his service. And if we have that attitude, and if we understand that Krishna is there for us as our best friend, and also pointed out in today's verse, Bhagavan, and it's not only Purusha Uttama, Purusha Uttama, Purusha and Joya Uttama means, Ut means above, Tama means darkness. So Krishna is never covered by darkness. We are based on our own desires, sometimes covered by darkness. Sometimes voluntarily, not sometimes, practically all the time. Something is pointed out, just like the word, when I speak in schools, I tell them about the four regular principles. One of them is no intoxication. So we write the word on the board. In the middle of the word, intoxication, I ask the students, what's there? Everybody can see, toxic. So it's telling you, this is poison. Toxic means poisonous. But still we voluntarily take poisonous substance to alter our consciousness. So I asked them why? Why would somebody do that? Why do you want to alter your consciousness? Because they're not happy in their normal consciousness. But what we call normal consciousness in this world is that not actually our normal consciousness. It's a disease consciousness. This business of Ishwara Hama Hum Bogi, Siddho Hum Balawan Saki, this is disease consciousness. Normal consciousness is when Sarvopadi Vinir Bhuktam, when you get rid of all these designations and all this illicit material desires, you come back to your normal, healthy consciousness and you'll be naturally happy. But because we're not happy in this disease consciousness, then we take intoxicants to try to alter our consciousness. It doesn't work. As I point out to the kids, when you take an intoxicant, you get high. Then I ask them, do you stay there? They all understand, no. You don't stay, you come down. And then you have to take again, and you go up. So you ride this roller coaster of up and down, getting high, coming down, getting high, coming down. And the more you do it, the worse it becomes for you. It's very costly, financially, because if you want some good whatever, you have to pay for it. 
And health-wise, mental health, physical health. So it's not a good deal, but we do it anyway. Most people still do that. Why? Voluntarily being covered by ignorance. So Krishna's Purusha Uttama, he's beyond this darkness. He can never be covered by this kind of ignorance. And therefore we take shelter of him. And also he's referred to today as Bhagavan. And Prabhupada many times explained where that came from and what it means. Bhagavan means the possessor of all opulences, but and not just possessor, but in full. And he always recites that verse by Parashar Muni. Aishvaryasya, Samagrasya, Viryasya, Yashasha, Shriya, Jnana, Vairagya Yostraiva, Shanam Bhaga Itingana. That personality who has these six opulences in full, unlimitedly, that person is Bhagavan. So, Aishvarya, wealth, Virya, strength, Yasha, fame, just like that's where, why Mother Yashoda is called Yashoda. She gives Yasha fame to Krishna. Krishna is the most famous already. But by interacting with Mother Yashoda, either in the Stamadar form or in the Janmastami form, we have the picture as proper would call them. You never call them paintings. Picture. In that picture, we have Yashoda bathed in Krishna first, Janmastami. So when he associates with Yashoda, he becomes more famous. That's why she's called Yashoda. Yasha Da. She gives fame to Krishna. So, Yashasha Shriya. Physical appearance. Can there, no one can compare to Krishna. No one can compare to Krishna. His beauty is not only incomparable, it's ever increasing. I mean, there's competition, we see. Prophet has also mentioned that Krishna sees the gopis, how beautiful they are, and he appreciates, and his beauty increases. And they see how beautiful Krishna is, and their beauty increases like that. And it just goes on eternally. We can't conceive of that in our material condition. Nothing expands eternally here. As a matter of fact, we... Very rapidly, we're depleting the resources of this tiny little planet that's floating in space. We think it's so big, but it's not. It's a tiny little speck of space dust. And yet, we think there's unlimited oil here and unlimited this and unlimited that, and we're digging and drilling, and, but it's going to run out. It's going to run out. So when Prophet left, he was saying 50 and another 100 years at most. So Prophet left in 77. So he said at that point, another 50 years, 100 years at most, all this oil-driven society is going to crash. So we have to be ready for that. We have to take it seriously. Yes, you know, we have, we, he wanted us to be in the cities to preach, but at the same time, we have to remember the other part of it, the Varnashram side, the farming side, so that we're not dependent, we're not you know, foolishly dependent on Vons and Trader Joe's, because the day will come when Trader Joe's will not have anything on the shelves. People are experiencing that already in other countries. Or whatever is there on the shelf is so expensive. You can't, you can't afford it. So even in our situation here in New Dorka, we can grow you know, some tomatoes, some zucchini, some whatever we can grow easily in the little bit of land that we have here. And not only that, we have to keep reserve emergency stock of dry goods, rice and dal and stuff like that. Because things are not looking very good right now. <clears throat> All around the world there's problems. And we have to be prepared for that. We have to be intelligent enough. So, But by taking shelter of Purusha Uttama, Bhagavan Sri Krishna, then our future is bright. Because we're not trying to stay here and enjoy. Yes, we have to maintain this body as long as we're here. But we're not looking for ultimate enjoyment in material activities, in material existence. It doesn't make sense. Again, even a child can understand that. You tell them exactly what's going on. For everybody, there's birth, death, old age, and disease. You cannot escape it. The wealthy people cannot buy their way out of death. And Prabhupada told that story about that wealthy man who was about to die. And he begged the doctor, Doctor, please give me four more years. I, have, I haven't completed my plans yet. Prabhupada was saying, such a rascal. He doesn't realize when your time comes, that's it. You can't pay any amount of money to live a second longer than you're destined to live. So an intelligent person then asks, what? am I supposed to do with my life, with my time, with my energy, with my money? Use it for serving Purushottama, Bhagavan Sri Krishna, under the guidance of pure devotees. Like, I'll finish with this today. One of the items on the calendar is the appearance of Nimbarka Acharya. As we know, there are four Vaishnava Sampradayas. We are in the Brahma Madhva Gaudiya Sampradaya. So Brahma first, then 
Why Madhva? Why not Narada? As Narada is mentioned here in this purport today. Marichi, Narada, these are sons of Brahma. Why, why not? But we know, in each of these Vaishnava uh, Sampradayas, there's a Samstapaka Acharya recognized. So even though Brahma taught Narada, Narada taught Vyasa, Vyasa taught Madhva, Madhva is considered a Samstapaka Acharya for our Sampradaya. Then there's the Sri Sampradaya. Who's the Samstapaka Acharya there? Ramanuja. Then there is the Kumara Sampradaya. Nimbarka, yes. So he comes in the Kumara Sampradaya. Very nice, the story is told of how it all unfolded. It's in uh, Bhakti Nautakar's Navadi Dhammahatmya. If you've never read that, today's a good day to read it. It's a very small book. Um, you can probably find it at Govindas if you, uh, gift shop if you don't have one. But in that book, uh, Bhakti Nautakar tells the story of how Nimbakacharya became the Acharya of the you know, he was a worshiper of Lord Shiva, and Lord Shiva was pleased with him and advised him to go and take shelter of the four Kumaras, and he found them in a the forest and surrendered to them. They initiated him. And then they told him that, they gave him worship of Radha Krishna, Radha Krishna told him to worship Radha Krishna, but in the, they advised him that in the future, these forms will combine into one, and that's your real Ishtadeva. So... Uh, they did, and they appeared to him as Lord Chaitanya. Lord Chaitanya told them that I'm coming in the future. Don't tell anybody. Just keep it a secret for now. But I will come in the future. And he said, you will take part in my Leela. You will take birth as a very, very big pundit scholar. This Kashmiri scholar. And you will come, and I will defeat you in debate, and you will surrender to me. So, so, so one may ask, if my future is already planned out. The Lord can tell me, now where is my free will? See, people may ask like that. If the Lord already knows what you're going to do in your next birth, <laughs> exactly, he can tell you what you're going to do, where you're going to take birth, what you're going to do, then where is my free will? Free will is always there, but for the pure devotees like Limbarka, like Srila Prabhupada, even though their future is already known, like Prabhupada knew, I'm going to cross the ocean at 870, I'm going to open so many temples, it was already predicted, because they have surrendered their free will to the Supreme Lord, they do exactly what the Lord wants them to do. See, our, well, maybe not all of you, but those of you who are still in conditioned consciousness, like me, we surrender to Maya, and Maya tells us what to do. <laughs> and we go along very happily, even though we can see it's not going to produce anything good. We see, experience, grandfathers died, fathers died, everybody's tried for happiness in eating, sleeping, mating, and defending, and they've never been happy, but still Maya tells us, go for it. You make, you'll be the one that stands out. Krishna says, it's temporary, it's miserable, but I will prove God to be wrong. That's our attitude. So yes, there's free will. Even though the future is known, there's still free will. Pure devotee means voluntarily surrendering your free will to do what Krishna wants you to do. And you're completely in contact with the Supreme Super soul, jitatmana, prasantasya, paramatma, samanvita. When you're completely in contact with the super soul, you do exactly what the super soul wants you to do. That's pure devotion. So what's up here? Grantara Shiva Bhagavatam ki jai, Srila Prabhupada ki jai, Gaur Bhakti Vrindha ki jai. It's over time. Sorry. <laughs> you can ask me personally, but it's already over time. All right,